Yes, ma'am. It's all yours. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Student Engineering and Creativity Convention Awards Ceremony. My name is Jasmine Yin, and I'm excited to be your MC today. And we're going to start off with our live demos and live interviews. Okay. For our first group, we're going to have ACF6. Yep, so just, uh, just FYI for all the students and participants, uh, we've uh, kind of randomly uh, picked some of your projects and we would like to uh, show your video and uh, maybe ask you a few questions. Uh, Jasmine is gonna ask you a few questions just to uh, uh, give everybody a chance to learn about your project and how you went about uh, doing it. All right, uh, shall I show the video, Jasmine? Yes, please. Okay, let's see, let's make sure it works. is a super awkward team routine. Can you guys hear awesome, the sound? Least in grace. Our project is about the future city on an exo planet called Tabular 452B. But after humans move to this new planet, we lack plenty of material, so we need to solve this problem by collecting coins and buying stuff to build our city. Let's click start and then just put adventure. We need to use um, arrow keys to move about. Don't touch red because that's the color of spikes, and spikes are not a good thing. Um, touch the green flag to earn coins. When you're done, it should bounce you back where you can select other games. Now in the solar system, use WASD to move. There's an exit button on top if you want to exit this game. Don't touch purple because that's lava. And then you can go into the portal to go to the next level. Now paint your future city. If I paint something and I accidentally do this, I can click the X up here to erase it. Now, when I'm done, I can click save. Good job. Very interesting. You get coins when you play the games and you go to the store to buy stuff by clicking on the button. The store has an aquarium, an office, a post office, a house, a school, a skyscraper, a UFO, a spaceship, a time machine, and a robot. You can see the number of coins you have on the screen. Each of these have different prices. To buy the stuff, you will need enough coins. If you don't have enough coins, the buy button under the thing is gray. And when you click it, it will say, not enough coins. But if you have enough coins, if you click it, it will hide in, it will have less of the number of coins that you have had before you click the button. I'll be talking about the map. When you click the backpack button, the items you have bought will appear. And a white box will appear. The white box contains all the items you have bought and allows you to drag the item onto the map. If you click this X button that appears when you press the backpack button, it will exit out of the white box, including the items, unless they have been dragged out of the white box. Next to the backpack is a city map. The city map has flying cars, a lake, patches of grass, and more items. There's also an exit button you can press if you would like to exit the map. After we put the stuff on the map, we also have a robot car to deliver stuff to people. Oh, what an amazing presentation from the super secret, the super accurate secret team. I have a few questions for you if you would like to come on camera and answer them. 
If you don't, that's fine as well. Uh, are, they, are you eating? Yeah. AFC 6? Yes. Okay. All right. How did you guys come up with this idea? that's on Mars, where people might go to Mars. So we wanted to do that the same thing. Instead of Mars, we went to Kuiper 452b, which is like a Earth-like planet. Oh, very creative. I saw that you had a shop for all the coins that you can collect during you playing games. Are there other things that you want to include later on? Any different types of buildings? We can include some stuff like a library and stuff. Or even the pet shop. A market. Or even some other places like Walmart. I see, very nice. And then last question I have for you. What did you learn from this project? It could either be coding in a new language or it could just be, you know, designing a map or what to include in your Martian city. a lot of ways to do something on scratch other than just doing a way and these ways have um, some bugs or some advantages or disadvantages in them if you compare the codes. Thanks. What an amazing presentation. Thank you guys. We can move on to the next group. Our next group is BCCA7, Everett Jen. I'm sure many of you have received this or this, but later realized that you forgot to put your clothes out on the pickup day. Or maybe you bought a big box of food at Costco just to realize that you kind of don't like it and it would be a big waste of food to return it. Or you have two brand new notebooks that are, of course, not worth the crave for supposed All of these problems can be solved with the help of Aid. Aid is an app built in MIT App Inventor where people in the same community communicate and help each other by posting and exchanging spare items. This app is really easy to use. First, users choose their community, which can be a church, school, or a company. And then they select their account and log in. In the home screen, users can choose between multiple categories. Let's add an item. This item that I'm adding is a bag of pasta that has four kinds of it. But I ate one kind of pasta and I didn't really like it. These kinds of open packages can't be sold on Craigslist because of safety issues, but your neighbor won't mind picking it up from your doorstep. And as you can see, all of the information that I inputted is displayed here. This app will also automatically generate recommendations based on one search history in the past 30 days. Whenever someone views an item from a category, the app increments a variable stored in a database. When the app recommends items, it takes the top three search categories and then recommends some from each. As you can see, Sanjay has searched in the books and stationery categories. If someone is a newly joined member of the community, the app will not recommend anything for them as they have not searched anything.
Another unique feature of CommunaAid is that when users add books to CommunaAid, the app uses Google Books API to automatically gather additional information about the book using only the ISBN number. As you can see, I'm inputting the number right now. As you can see, all of the additional information that can be gathered about the book using the ICN number is displayed here. Best yet, you don't need to create another account or password. You can easily load your communities directory into community without worrying about security things. I'm currently working on the future improvements of this app, like a barcode scanner that can automatically display descriptions of items, a Google Maps API to help locate addresses, and a group messaging system. Whether we belong to a music school or a swim team or a church, we belong to a community and we want to help each other. Let's communicate! Oh, what a great presentation. Thank you, Community Aid. If you would like to join us on camera and answer some questions. Okay, hello. Hello. So there is a lot of stuff in your app. What feature gave you the hardest time in completing? Um, probably it was the recommendations because originally I had um, the app recommend some items from the top three search categories, but I eventually figured out, like, what if they haven't searched in three categories yet? And um, that kind of gave me a headache. So it took the most time out of all of the features to solve, probably. Nice, nice. How many times did you have to, like, test it to get it to work for that feature? Um, I mean, I didn't count, but it'd probably be, like, a lot, because... Um, I sometimes would give it to my parents to test and see if they could like break the app almost. And um, yeah, so it was a lot of work to finally get it to work. It's a lot of hard work and amazing effort that you put in. Let's see. So your future plan for this app. If you had more time, what is something that you want to put in and to make it on like a larger scope? Um, I guess like by a larger scope, do you mean like expand it to places other than communities or? Uh, yeah, like or other features you want to include. Oh, um, I guess one of the main other features I would want to include that's kind of not set on this uh, video is like sometimes when you're typing like the ISBN number for your book, it's kind of hard on like a small phone. So I was thinking of maybe using there's a feature in MIT App Inventor called um, speech to text, which kind of translates everything that you say into text, so I thought that might be pretty helpful. All right, thank you, Everett. It's a lot of effort and like a lot of thinking of how this app can help the community. All right, let's go to the next team. And here we have BCCA8, Andrew Yes. As of now, annually over 1 million children disappear globally, and over 90% are due to endangered runaways slash kidnappings. This is what inspired me to create Geofence, because one missing child is one too many. This is a detailed diagram of my Geofence design. The Arduino IDE code allows my Arduino GSM 1400 to access my GPS receiver's data and sends it to an IoT cloud via a cellular network using an IoT SIM card. Now what's so significant about this IoT SIM card? 
and it only costs one dollar a month for data compared to traditional phones that require 15 to 20 dollars a month the data eventually makes makes its way to my application using an iot cloud called thingspeed the data sent from the gps goes to thingspeed via a cellular network and through thingspeed my app my app can access the data using an api and display it onto a marker the app will then evaluate if this marker is inside the designated geofence set by the Guardian, and if it's not, it'll send the data back through ThingSpeed to my Arduino to tell the OLED and buzzer to go off. My application consists of a geofence screen that allows the Guardian to move a green rectangle, which is the designated area their child should be in. They can move this rectangle either pressing on the screen and holding, or using the green arrows at the bottom of the screen. To make the changes more dramatic while pressing the arrows, you can increase or decrease the numbers in the scale movement, and to change the size of the rectangle, you can either increase or decrease the number in the scale size box, and you'll immediately see the changes in the size of the rectangle. This is the designer part of my geofence screen. If we take a look at the code, we can see the ThingSpeed API is able to take all the readings from the database and map it on to a point with a marker. To ensure the user's safety and to prevent random people from accessing their location, geofence requires two-step verification. The first step being a username and password, and the second step being a face recognition ID. This was made possible using a machine learning model that I created that can recognize my face and differentiate it from others, and imported it into PIC. PIC is a personal image classifier extension that can be imported into MIT App Inventor and executed within that line of code. After it recognizes my face, it allows me into the app. I'm currently on my old elementary school to test out my app's capability. I currently set my geofence to be in this position exactly, and if we keep walking that way towards the pond, we're going to exit the geofence to see how my app reacts. So I'm not currently at the pond, which is, which is just outside of my geofence zone that I just sent over there. I walked all the way from there to this zone. And it's currently indicating that I'm out of the zone as the phone and the GPS is going off like crazy. What a great presentation for Geofence. If we could have Andrew come on camera and answer some questions. Uh, hello. Hello. This is a really interesting and kind of out of the box, like, problem. How did you come up with it and then come up with your solution of creating this geofence? I like how you said out of the box right there. <laughs> okay, so I'm um, starting off. <clears throat> uh, I've, I've been getting a ton of Amber Alerts recently, just like, uh, and I really wanted to solve this problem because, you know, I'm missing children. So I first uh, thought about using a GPS module, which I'm currently using. And uh, using this GPS module, I had, to, I had to have something that can operate it. And the first thing I thought of was an Arduino because I've been using it quite a lot. And so uh, one thing led to another. I uh, attached these two together, started testing, gathering data from the GPS. And it soon became a tracking device I could, uh, that was compatible with MIT App Mentor. So I just utilized this. All right, so I think we had a judge who wanted to ask a question or make a comment. Yeah, very nice, very innovative thought. So the question to you is, uh, is this geofence uh, tied to the phone right now? Um, sorry, could you rephrase that question? So the geofence and the iPhone, are these two linked together or uh, the, uh, the IoT is working by itself? Oh, yes. So the, the geofence and the uh, IoT are sort of compatible in a sense. Uh, so the geofence is linked with the phone in which you can set uh, the position. And when, when the marker leaves a geofence, uh, the phone will send data to my IoT cloud, which will tell the, the LED, uh, sorry, tell my Arduino that the, the child is outside the geofence. So they're all sort of linked to the geofence in that sense. Okay, so you, you need both the devices. You need an iPhone and the IoT device, right, to uh, make that uh, make the system work, right? I don't necessarily uh, need the GPS completely, as long as there's data in the IoT cloud that the phone, yeah. the app can work independently. 
Go ahead. Okay. And I think that we have our judge three, Millard, who had a comment or a question. Yeah, I have a comment. So just <clears throat> uh, thank you, Andrew, for the great presentation. I just uh, wanted to make a comment and say uh, the way that he presents and look at the problem uh, is unique. And uh, so uh, he looks at different problems. It shows that he's a curious person and he asks questions. Uh, so I like the feature, this feature in you, Andrew. So let's continue that, be curious, ask questions. And uh, then you see uh, problems and uh, there's other ways that you can solve your problems. So you always can tackle those approaches. You can see whether the other approaches learn from other persons, learn from other stuff. There are great stuff available, but uh, I really like your the approach, the way that you look at the problems and uh, learning different stuff, which are not necessary for you, but you had to, you put time and learn those. Great job. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Milad, and thank you, Andrew. Now we'll move to our next team. We have AFC 8, Ryan, sorry, Evan and Ryan Tran. So hello everybody, and this is our submission for SECC competition, and this is by me, Evan, and my brother, Ryan, and our team name is KCP. So how does our machine work? Our machine works by taking ice and melting it, and then we use that, and then we use electrolysis process to make it into oxygen and hydrogen. This makes breathable air for humans to survive. So this is our code for our Ripley, so we just use a custom block to make him talk, like type it out, and we can use that, re reuse that, and then this is just him moving around. And the molecules, we have clones, so then they can float inside the machine. So right here we have the rocket ship and Ripley. They both contribute to the flow of the story using the broadcast message blocks. And then here you have the laser, you use the space bar to fire the laser at the enemies. And we have the health bar, which is drawn by the pen extension. Here's the alien boss and the aliens. They both contribute to the plot of the story and attack you. Okay, so Ripley is back from getting the oxygen. So he's back in the city. And then an alien attacks them suddenly and takes their oxygen. So this is where the story begins. I'm going to play the project. So there's the alien and takes the oxygen from them. Okay, so this is where he gets into a spaceship and goes fight off the aliens. So, he's gonna fly, fly, and here are the aliens. So first he fights off the minion aliens. get touched by one, you take damage. Here's the boss. Here's the boss fight. Okay, so there's- that's the end of the fight. And the boss drops the oxygen tank, and Ripley takes it back and brings it back to the city. Okay, so that's basically uh, the end of the demonstration. So that's our project. Thank you for your time. All right, can we have Evan and Ryan come on screen and answer some questions? Sure, sure. Hello. Hello. Um, Hello. You guys have a very interesting concept of extracting oxygen from water. I yeah. also really enjoyed the many games and interactions within your demo. 
Have you thought about using this in a larger scale? Yes, because right now, as of now, the electrolysis machine, you can't really create oxygen efficiently because it takes many hours to take the oxygen from the water. So in the future, when uh, technology becomes more advanced, we may be able to develop new machines, uh, more powerful, that can um, extract the oxygen quicker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nice, that's amazing. And then one other question I have for you. So in your presentation, when you were doing the whole thing, what is one thing that you learned either from the coding or from just researching the project itself? So I learned a lot about electrolysis. I had no idea what that was until I joined this competition. And I actually learned a lot about space and Mars, polar ice caps, and all that stuff. Yeah, same with me. I learned a lot about electrolysis. I didn't really know much about it before, but ever since I started this project, um, I have learned a lot. I thank you very much for sharing such a nice concept and also introducing also introducing this electrolysis machine to us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and can we go to the next team? We have BCO F3, JD Agal, Jason Huan, and Nancy Chen. Hello and welcome to our presentation about the development of the IHOP app for safe cities of the future. I'm Jada. I'm Jason. And I'm Nancy. The problem we're addressing is that people and animals are often in danger or need assistance if no direct way of alerting others. There are some existing solutions people are using, but those come with disadvantages. To solve those disadvantages, we have made an all-in-one app that includes a tracker, an alert system, and a mutual assistance network. This figure shows the flow of the iHelp app. Our app allows the users to post or call when people or animals need help. Now Jason will show the demo. Upon startup, we will first have a login screen, which I am going to very quickly log into with my very special password. There we go. And this is our home screen, which is just going to have each post as well as the information about them and as well as the buttons that will transition to each different screen. So first let's go to the create post screen. And let's say I want to create a post about my missing phone. I can adjust the image. I can add a title. Okay, so when I finish filling out each item, I can click the submit button and we will be taken back to the home screen where you can see this is just where I filled it out just earlier. And next, let's take a look at the map, which is essentially just a map that lets us see the location of each item. So for example, this is the one that we just had. And when I click refresh, it will take us to a new address, like this one right here. Now let's go back and we can take a look at the help screen, which is just basically, it's a quick way for the user to get any help, get help in any form that they need. So first we have calling 911, very simple, you can view the contacts and we can send an emergency text that informs the person of our location like that right there. Now let's go back and let's look at the settings, which is just a very quick overview of our account. Now, if we want to change our account username, we can just change this real quick. We click submit. It's going to bring us back to the login screen. And as you can see here, when I try to use the old password, it is not going to work because 
it has now been updated to the new password that I just entered. And there we go, back on the home screen. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Thank you for listening. And yeah, I hope you enjoy. What a great presentation from iHelp. If we can have the team members come on screen and answer a few questions. Um, uh, we have a little problem. Jason's not here. He had an emergency. Yeah, had problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all good. I guess you guys will just have to answer the questions instead now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right, for this iHelp app, what is the thing that gave you the most trouble in completing? Um, I feel like uh, the main problem that we ran into was just like tr figuring out how to implement um, parts of the map and like the navigation and stuff because uh, the code was like pretty complicated and like we had to like learn how to use databases and API keys but um, we basically just asked like each other um, we used the internet and we asked our teachers and that's how we solved it. Um, nice. I think another sort of difficult part was how well, like Jada sort of mentioned it, but the databases. Um, we learned a little bit about cloud database in a previous class, but all the other ones we had to figure out a lot. And for cloud database, we encountered several problems about like the tagging system and not enough storage and everything being slow and things like that. So yeah, that was one of the really big problems. I see. Is this your first time working with databases and coding? Yeah. Um, I've, I've worked at them a little bit before, but like it was for a homework project and not this intensively. I've never actually done, done anything with them. Well, yeah. nice. Keep up the great work. It was really nice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Can we have our next team? That's for I think that's it, Jasmine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, then that concludes our live interview and live demo session. Next, I would like to say that this event is hosted by the Chinese Institute of Engineers, USA DFW chapter. And we will begin our, with some opening remarks from our organizer. Please help me welcome 20, 22 CIE USA DSW President, Dr. Chris Ko. Thank you, thank you, Jasmine. Wow, first of all, I can't help but be inspired by the videos. And I know those videos were just a random sampling of, uh, of our comp competitors um, this year. But clearly, these young students are just simply amazing. So I, I'm, I'm just so excited. But anyways, I do want to welcome everybody again uh, to the 2022 SECC competition. Uh, my name is Chris Coe, as uh, J Jasmine had mentioned. Uh, CIE USA DFW is a nonprofit organization based here locally in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And it's, it's run by a team of very dedicated and passionate volunteers. Now CIE is, you know, one of our main mission is to promote STEM. And really the SECC goal is very much aligned to that. Beyond STEM, we really want to develop the creativity and problem solving skills of our students. And we also want to encourage them uh, in terms of collaboration and in terms of teamwork. And as you have seen, um, those were well exemplified uh, in some of the projects that we have, uh, we have shown. So this year's SECC is based on software. Uh, as you have seen. And we all know that software is ubiquitous in pretty much almost everything that we touch, you know, from using our online maps to navigate, you know, from work 
to home and to hopefully avoid traffic, to making reservation for dinner or ordering pizza on a Friday evening, or even booking your flights for your next vacation. And of course, even the Zoom meeting uh, that we're in right now, it wouldn't happen unless we have software. So hopefully the SECC event provided our students an opportunity to learn and to leverage through the Scratch and the App Inventor programs uh, to launch their hopefully more interest in this area of engineering. I think we really need to give the students a round of applause for all their effort and creativity. Next, I want to thank our sponsors, Encore, Texas Instruments, Diodes, AT&T, Cafe Bang, Cindy's New York Delicatessen, PepsiCo, Console Path, Altair, and American Airlines. Thank you for your unceasing support and trust because without you, these events are not possible. And not only for your financial support, but your encouragement of your employees to volunteer and participate in many of CIE events. Thank you very much. Now, without further ado, let's find out who our winners are. Jasmine, I'll turn right. it back to Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ko. Today, we will have three groups of winners. We will have Division A, Division B, City of Future and Improving Academics, Division B, Communi Community Computational Action. Each of these will have a first, second, and third place. We will also present the Creativity Award for each of these three groups. And before we start the award ceremony, award ceremony, could I please ask everyone to turn off their video at this time? When I announce, when we announce the winners, if the winners can turn on your camera and get on screen so we can highlight your video and take a picture. Now, with far, without further ado, let's get ready for the awards. At this time, I would like to invite CIE USA DFW's chairman, Dr. Tiger Zo, to come on screen and join our award presenters. Congratulations to all our contestants. I'm really impressed by your creativity. I hope you have learned a new language, a new skill, and a new knowledge in this contest. I actually, I learned a lot from today's presentation. Thanks to all our judges and volunteers for your dedication and devotion. Thanks CAE team for this wonderful event. Back to you, Jasmine. Thank you, Tiger. So now we will begin with our Division A winners. We had nine competitors in Division A. For Division A, we will have Mr. Fa Ching Wang from Console Path say a few words and announce our winners. Mr. Fa Ching, can you please come on camera? Already did. Hello? <laughs> Yes, we can hear you, Fatching. Okay, what would you like me to do? <laughs> uh, could you just say a few words, maybe some words of encouragement to our students? Okay, okay sure. Uh, the uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Fa Ching. Uh, I'm the president of the Council Pass uh, Corporation, which is a management and service uh, management service uh, company. Uh, on behalf of the Council Pass, I'd like to uh, really congratulate all of you for participating in this uh, program. From what I see in the last 30 minutes, Council Pass is gladly to continue sponsor this very meaningful program. Uh, SECC is a platform 
that uh, not only help you gain skills, but also to improve the, your proficiency. So keep on the good work and uh, uh, be persistent of your interest on engineering activities. Thank you. So that's back to you. Oh, so third place winner, uh, Zhong Li. Do we need uh, do we need the person to come online? Maybe we can uh, announce all the names and then uh, yeah. <laughs> pick a group picture or a snapshot. Okay, so I only see the third place. Okay, second place Angela Gu, Ryan Zhen, Aiden Gu. If I can have the first place, first place. Roger Zhang. So congratulations to all of you. Okay. So do we need, okay. <laughs> now I see some faces now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. That's uh, Aiden. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Jasmine, are we ready to move to uh, the next group? Yes. Fantastic. Okay. The picture. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Wong. And congratulations to our Division A winners. Next up, we have seven competitors in Division B, City of Future and Improving Academics. Please help me welcome Mr. Autry Warren from Encore to announce the winners and say a few words. Thank you and good afternoon. Uh, I'm excited to be part of the uh, SCCC program and this has been uh, extremely exciting for me. Uh, a little bit of background about Encore and again the reason why it's so exciting, you know, as a, we're the electric utility company, you know, we bring the electric electricity to to our, to our homes and businesses. We don't generate it, but we are the poles and wires that you see all across the, the uh, North Texas. We serve 10 million customers. And one of the key focus on us serving our customers is that we want to make sure that we are very reliable and that we are providing uh, the service in a manner that uh, improves our customer experience. And what's important about improving the customer experience, we, we improve that experience through our employees. And our employees are key to this success. You know, we have the thought and process of and a culture of, of diversity of thought, uh, the concepts of one encore, you know, team and making all of this happen. And then most importantly, with how the environment is always changing in doing this and looking at innovation and transformation in how we provide our services. So today was a prime example of of the, you know, what makes it exciting for me is our, you know, our future is well in hand, just watching uh, these uh, projects and watching the videos is, is exciting. And, you know, Encore, we've been a long, long-term supporter of CIE and uh, we have found CIE to be an uh, excellent organization in developing our, our future leaders and developing, uh, our, 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 not only our leaders, but how we interface with our, with our community. So again, my hat's off to, to everyone uh, involved, uh, especially the planning committee uh, and, and Dr. Ko for keeping me updated and informed. Uh, also my hat's off to the judges. It takes time to do this. It takes time to judge and, and you're important in developing our youth going forward. So again, thank you for this opportunity to participate. So third place is Crystal Shen, Sophia Zhao, and Zihan Li. In second place is Jada Gao, Jason Wong, and Nancy Chen. And in first place, without further ado, is Charles Yu, Andy Chen, and Ryan Tang. Again, congratulations to all of the participants. 
and to all of the awardees today. Thank you. If the winners could turn on their camera and join us on screen. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Warren, and congratulations to our winners. Next up, we have our Division B, Community Computational Action. We had eight competitors in this division. Please help me welcome Ms. Jenny Gong from Cafe Bank to present the awards. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm very excited here to see all the young children and have a, such it very inspired me. Uh, I see them uh, to uh, have uh, those apps, very fun apps and uh, very um, inspired. And I do see the future engineers and the future leaders. Um, and thanks CIE to uh, invite Cathay Bank to this event. Um, just a little bit about Cathay Bank. Uh, um, it's Cathay Bank Foundation. And our mission is to help communities where Cathay Bank operates. And uh, our branch footprint stretches across nine states and to Hong Kong. Uh, we do have representative offices in Beijing, Shanghai, and Taipei. Uh, we just celebrate our six years anniversary. Uh, in Dallas, we have been working with CIE for some years. Uh, we really uh, see how CIE uh, work with the community, uh, helping those uh, our young children. And uh, we are very honored to be partner with uh, CIE. Um, thank you so much. Um, the third place, Avis Wu, Badi Yen, Matthew Wong. Second place, Everett Jin. First place, Andrew Ye, who is the geofence, right? I just saw your app. Congratulations to all winners. All right, thank you so much, Mrs. Gong, and congratulations to our winners again. Next up, we have our Creativity Awards. Please help me welcome Mr. Earl Reeves from American Airlines to announce the winners and say a few words. Oh, Mr. Earl, you are on mute. Apologies. Good afternoon. My name is Earl Reyes. I'm an engineer at America Airlines, and I witnessed many great presentations today. They all have a th follow the same theme of what I call urban mobility, and uh, these awards are justly um, earned. Thank you. Our creativity award is uh, for Esselyn Mew. Um, she gave a presentation about ocean pollution and a creative way of solving it. For Division B, I didn't watch the presentation, but uh, winners are Alyssa Tong, 
Alyssa Way and William Zell. And for Division B, for Community Computation Action was Olivia Zhang. Thank you all for your hard work. Congratulations for our winners and thank you again, Mr. Reed. Now let's give all our winners another round of applause. This concludes the award ceremony, and now I will pass control to the CIE USA DFW President, Dr. Ko. Thank, thank you, Jasmine. That was sim simply amazing. All of the winners and every participants of this event should be congratulated for their creativity, teamwork, and I see a lot of budding engineers amongst us now. Um, of course, you know, events like this uh, doesn't just really happen by itself. And I want to personally thank uh, Xin Cheng Tang and Hua Wen Jin, who are the co-chairs of this year's SECC. Um, through their leadership, their hard work, and their creativity, uh, I believe that you would agree with me that this event was just fantastic. Um, now, of course, behind the scenes, they are more than just the two of them. There are many, many volunteers, as I have mentioned earlier, that support many of our CIE events. And I'm gonna pass that uh, to now to Hua Wen, uh, to thank all of the volunteers um, throughout the last few months to make this event successful. Hua Wan? Uh, yes. Yeah, first of all, I really need to uh, show my appreciation for all the volunteers. We list some names here. Uh, most important is judges, right? They spend their time reviewing uh, videos, spend time to give uh, interview and also give points. It's very interesting to see all the kids submitting all those projects, but those projects need to be uh, evaluated and by all the judges. So we got, uh, we got, uh, how many? We got uh, Alex, Hailong, Xinfen, uh, Malay, uh, Banerjee, Hudson, Satish, Al, Joe, Carl, Jasmine, and Martin. We all need to appreciate their help, their time, and their dedications. So let's give a round of applause to them. Yeah, okay. So uh, with all these uh, uh, judges, there's also other volunteers. We got two workshops, if you remember correctly. We got two sessions to introducing the overall project and also detail of the uh, app inventors and scratches. There's Andrew Liang, Hudson, uh, Earl, Yumeng, and Xingcheng, and Martin. So if you notice the name, some of them are both judges and their speakers and the lecturers. So they put a lot of the time into this project to make it successful. Also to support all this process, we got other supporters, we call Zoom Masters. We got Jimmy for marketing, Jasmine for MC, Andrew and Joy for our Zoom Master who moves the people around timely basis. And there's a Jen Liu also for the uh, marketing and also web mastering. And also there's other groups, uh, we didn't show names, but it's all CIE student marketing team. We do a lot of works. You see the posters, you see the web page, they're designed by them. So uh, we we'll, would we'll like to thank them again for their dedication and time. <laughs> uh, so Chris, yeah. So um, for last page, we got a prize as announced. The first prize, First prize winner is $75, the third is $25. We'll send out the gift card together with trophies. At the uh, and later stage, uh, we're gonna send out an email for details 
how to do this, how to pick up. A lot, lot, uh, most likely it's gonna be a CIE office. So please join in and pick up your prize. Okay. Okay, so back to you, Chris. All right. Thanks, Hua Wan. Um, just a couple of things. I uh, wanted to mention we have two upcoming events uh, that might interest both students and parents. Uh, on June 11th, uh, we are going to be uh, holding our MathCom Math Fun competition. This is one of our flagship youth programs. Uh, it's been on for more than 30 years, I believe. And it, actually, it will be our first in-person event this year held at Collin College. Um, and then later on, uh, in uh, towards the end of the school year, at the beginning of the summer, uh, we will um, start our Young Achievers Award, where you can apply for a scholarship. So make sure that you check our website and you will find more information uh, as they become available.